on our social media platforms. We have Instagram and Twitter. We also have individual vlog channels that we document our days and weekly things that we do. So you can subscribe to those channels too. We have separate YouTube channels. I don't know if I mentioned this. My husband does his stuff. He has a podcast. He does podcasting and vlogging. And I just do, you know, vlogging about various things. I have to say that his hair is quite dirty today. I don't know why. So guys, I just want to thank you to all the people who engage so much in our videos and all of you that take time to watch and listen to all my rumblings during these asthma sessions. Last week's videos I was telling a few stories of my African upbringing, basically how African parenting is and how a lot of you guys liked that you commented a lot on what you think about that topic so and some of you guys asked that I as usual tell stories I don't know how many stories you people think I have because each time I tell one you're like tell us more stories but yeah I do have quite a bunch, but it's just hard to remember. So sometimes when I'm doing my house chores and I remember a story or I remember something that I can discuss with you guys, I always note it down. And then when I get time, I sit down and make bullet points what I'm gonna discuss. His hair is really dirty, has some like white residue. I don't know if it's dandruff or something else. I can't tell. But this is definitely a white head. I don't know if you guys can see that it's really. So, anyways. Here it goes. So anyways, today I thought I should speak about growing up in Africa. Just my, I don't know if I should call them experiences or just the things that happened, you know, while I was growing up and things that were pretty common to me that might seem like foreign to, you know, compared to the Western culture. Things like funerals. <laughs> you know, in the Western culture, when someone dies, we have seen it here. It's pretty done quickly. There's just, um, you know, family gathering, and then the next few days, they mourn, and then they bury the person. But in Africa, most times, it's like a whole week and a half thing. When someone dies, you don't even need to tell the neighbors because news travels so fast. And during that time, when I was growing up, there weren't even any telephones, you know. It's just word of mouth. Someone meets someone. Someone meets someone and, you know, tells that person. And then another one tells that person. And before you know it, the whole village or town knows. Second order of business would be to pitch tent and to borrow the biggest buns that could cook food for like a hundred people. Those are usually borrowed like at church because churches would cook for people. So usually you would find those buns at church and, and then the family of the dead person. 
skipping 
rope. We made rope from tree bugs. Or sometimes we'd get rope from, you know, at home when your parents are not looking. You just get the rope and you go out and play. In the African culture, you had to play very close to home. You wouldn't like to travel miles like I see the Western kids. They hop on their bikes and they, you know, ride for like 30 minutes to go to our friends. Your friends really were the neighbors' kids and your, you know, brothers and sisters. Usually, you had to be able to answer or hear your parents call you. So basically, we would, you know, play games in a central place where when your parents call you, you're able to hear them and run home quickly and help and then run back and play with your friends. Anyway, we skipped rope, we played, you know, ball games. We made a ball with like old clothes or socks and we, we had a game that I really loved. Basically, depending on the game, we make either a small ball or a big ball. And this ball would actually be painful, you know, because it's made of old clothes tied together. <laughs> so anyway, we'd make a ball and then one person would stand on their father's side and the other one on the opposite side and then one person would be in the middle and they would try to hit the person with the ball. So basically the person in the middle, his main job, you know that meme, you have one job, your main job is to dodge the ball, that was really fun, so you try to dodge the ball and they're trying to hit you as hard as they can, <laughs> and you have to, you know, dodge it because when it hits you, it's kind of painful. Yeah, we played a couple of games, we also played, you know, mom and dad would emulate what we saw at home. Sometimes we would play my grandma, you know, we would play different characters in the homestead, depending on what kind of family we come from. We would talk like them, you know, behave the way they do, send the kids to the shop. <laughs> we had fun, we really had fun playing these games. We got like flowers in the garden, played weddings, we even played bridging. Everybody sits down and there is a like a pasta bridging. <laughs> and we just make it fun, you know, for us. I got a really good white dad. Yeah, there's this one game that I really, really enjoyed that you would really like play with your that really require that didn't require a lot of players, depending on how many people are free that day. So if you go out and you find that you know the neighbors' kids are picking tea leaves that day or they are doing other things, you just play with whoever is available. Basically, we would dig very small holes on the ground, on the mud, and then we would collect like really small stones. And we would put them on the side and we would try to like throw them in the air and the one that falls doesn't doesn't count as yours. So this game only required like two players. But it was really fun. Holidays in Africa, at least East Africa, are really different from holidays in the Western culture. Christmas season, of course, we didn't really have snow or even like the gift giving culture, we don't have it that much. Even though kids would get like a new dress, new clothes on Christmas Day, I can attest that even in you know, well of families, but this was a thing to get your child a new dress to go to specifically church with on Christmas morning. It doesn't matter if it's a Sunday or Monday or whatever, you just dress up on Christmas morning in your new outfit and you go to Sunday school to show it off to your friends. And in, and in those instances, like if you came from a humble home, like, you know, my home, my grandma's home, that's the only dress you'd get the whole year. So you will really be looking forward to Christmas to get the one nice dress, you know. Many times my mom would 
didn't send any money to take care of me. So my grandma would like sell, like when my auntie too, would sell some stuff like some, you know, coffee. We would pick coffee after school. And then she would also sell like just farm things to the market and save up money. Just swallow daily stuff, to daily food. And then on Christmas she would buy me a dress. Singing, you're like, what's happening? They're like, happy box. 